for People in Power, I'm Juliana Rufus. On today's programme, the Vatican's secretive bank. L'ex aperitorietà che nessuno poteva entrare all'interno dello Stato, non potevano essere fatte erogatori, non poteva essere... Earlier this month, the Vatican, the sovereign papal state at the heart of Rome, introduced new rules to clean up its financial system. At the heart of that system is the Vatican's own bank, the Institute of Religious Works, the IOR. Until now, the IOR has operated with few of the regulations that govern the activities of banks in the wider world, with sometimes disturbing results. In the 1980s, it became involved in an infamous fraud scandal, the Banco Ambrosiano affair, which made global headlines when its chief, Roberto Calvi, was found hanging from a bridge in London, a murder that has never been solved. More recently, Italian state prosecutors have been investigating allegations of money laundering at the IOR, freezing some accounts, seizing funds and putting its president under formal scrutiny. Filmmakers Alessandro Righi and Emanuele Piano have been examining this latest chapter in the history of a notoriously secretive organization. Every Sunday, worshippers crowd the St. Peter's colonnades and square. From his balcony, Benedict XVI imparts the sacraments and the latest behavioral guidelines. Over one billion Catholics look to the pontiff for guidance and donate their money to the Catholic Church. A large portion of this money makes its way to the Vatican and into the vaults of the IOR, the Institute for Religious Works, the Vatican's bank. The IOR is the vehicle through which thousands of charitable and religious initiatives around the globe are financed. But in September last year, Italian state prosecutors placed the bank under investigation for suspected money laundering. 23 million euros in Vatican funds were seized, representing only a fraction of suspect transactions now being scrutinized. IOR president Ettore Gotti Tedeschi was also placed under investigation and a huge financial scandal now threatens to envelop the church. For many Catholics, it has the disturbing echoes of another scandal of 30 years ago, the infamous Banco Ambrosiano affair, and some now fear that history may be repeating itself. Il presidente Gotti Tedeschi eh, si è fatto interrogare per chiarire, ma va anche detto che dopo il lungo interrogatorio eh, la procura ha ritenuto di non aver avuto nessun chiarimento, né sul titolare del conto, né sul destinatario delle operazioni. È una cosa abbastanza eh, singolare che eh, nemmeno l'attuale presidente dello IOR ha trovato il modo di chiarire una cosa di questo genere. The Institute for Religious Works is located behind the walls of the Vatican city-state and inside the massive tower built by Niccolò V. The bank was founded in 1942 by Pope Pius XII with the purpose of safekeeping the Vatican's vast assets in capital and real estate. Lo IOR non, non consente a chiunque di aprire dei conti, vi sono delle, delle norme abbastanza specifiche che eh, lo consentono di per sé eh, soltanto a organismi religiosi o eh, a, a individui ecclesiastici eh, con particolari titoli. The IOR is administered by industry professionals under the supervision of a council of cardinals. But because the IOR has only one central branch inside the Vatican, it has to use other banks outside the city-state to move its funds around. However, the names of its account holders are kept secret and transactions bear no other identification than that of the IOR. This means the origins of any deposit coming into an IOR account are wiped from the record before the funds are moved out to the international banking system. And that, say critics, makes money laundering all too easy. I profitti che lo IOR accumula nel corso di un anno di operazioni finanziarie sui capitali depositati presso lo IOR stesso sono dati al Papa per opere di carattere caritativo che il Papa svolge in tutto il mondo. Si tratta di una somma che grosso modo corrisponde a circa 70-80 milioni di euro ogni anno. Inevitably, this huge flow of cash, much of it untraceable, has attracted the attention of investigators. The latest probe began in the hills around Rome in late 2008 when Father Evaldo Biasini, treasurer of the Congregation of the Missionaries of the Precious Blood, answered his mobile phone. Hello. Hello. Hey, 
Diego, ciao. Come stai? Bene, bene. Father Biasini was speaking to a building contractor called Diego Nemone. Italian police, investigating the businessman for his alleged involvement in a corruption scandal, were recording Anemone's phone calls. Senti, no, io tanto ti scoccio, solo per rotture dei coglioni, perché ieri stamattina dovete una persona verso le 10 e mezza, 11. Tu come stai messo? I soldi? Eh. Qui ad Albano ce ne ho 10 soltanto. Ah, giù c'è niente. Giù a Roma potrei darti, per... mm. E poi poi portali in Africa, mescoletti, vediamo un po'. Following the call, prosecutors ordered a search of Father Biasini's office. The documents they seized revealed that the priest operated 57 different bank accounts, 13 of them at the IOR. Prosecutors say that millions of euros were passing in and out of the Vatican Bank through these accounts, part of them on behalf of Diego Anemone. In other words, Father Biasini appeared to be laundering the businessman's money. If so, it wasn't the first time that IOR accounts have been used in this way. To find out more, we went to Milan to meet journalist and author Gianluigi Nuzzi. In 2008, Nuzzi gained access to the private archives of a former Vatican official, Monsignor Renato Dardozzi. As a counselor to the Vatican's Secretary of State for 20 years, Dardozzi played a key role in the IOR's affairs. But when he left the Vatican, he took its secrets with him. Dardozzi si è trovato i mercanti del Tempio, non è riuscito a cacciarli, e per questo motivo che ha scelto di dare tutto al pubblico. Unbeknown to his superiors, Renato Dardozzi kept thousands of secret IOR documents. The papers show the details of hundreds of illegal transactions that made their way through the bank over a 20-year period. Dealings that were sheltered from public scrutiny by the Vatican's sovereign status. Gianluigi Nuzzi says that the Holy See also systematically refused to cooperate with Italian authorities on matters regarding Vatican finances. In the archives of Dardozzi there are centinaia of pages on requests of interrogatories by the Sicilian Sicilian magistrates about the money of the mafia, which they thought were close to the mafia, or at least, which were given to the Vatican authorities. The Vatican authorities were given to the authorities of the Vatican. The archive contains details of dozens of fake charitable foundations and explains how their accounts were used. One such was the Cardinal Francis Spellman Foundation. In 1990, its IOR account was used to pay one of the biggest bribes in Italian political history. Totaling almost $100 million, the bribe was distributed to all Italian political parties to favor a $1.4 billion public company merger. The account holder for the foundation was seven-time Italian Prime Minister Giulio Andreotti. La formula di assoluta insindicabilità sull'attività della stessa banca, l'assenza di qualsiasi tipo di controllo della Banca Centrale Italiana sui conti di transito aperti dallo IOR in Italia per decenni. Tutti questi sono elementi che compongono lo stesso quadro, che è un quadro di una banca offshore nel cuore di Roma. Little seems to have changed, even as Italy was starting to celebrate its 150th year as a united country, the Vatican's relaxed attitude to financial ethics was finding its latest expression in the scandal involving Father Evaldo Biasini and Diego Nemone. Italian prosecutors allege that the money which Father Biasini put through his IOR accounts was used by Diego Nemone to bribe several high-ranking public officials to secure high-profile contracts. These included preparations for the 150th anniversary, the 2009 G8 summit in Italy, and the World Swimming Championship in Rome. So why did Diego Nemone use Father Evaldo Biasini's IOR accounts in the first place? Because, generally, only religious organizations and members of the Catholic clergy can open an account at the Vatican Bank. But there have been some exceptions to this rule. We went to Palermo, the capital of Sicily, to hear about one of them.
mio padre, Vito Ciancimino, è stato arrestato per il reato di associazione a delinquere di stampo mafioso dal giudice Giovanni Falcone nel 1984. Mio padre ha avuto conti allo IOR fino all'epoca del 2000 quando li ha fatti chiudere, per cui parliamo dagli anni 70 a una trentina d'anni. In 1993, Don Vito Ciancimino, an influential member of the ruling Christian Democratic Party, became the first Italian politician to be convicted for his ties to the mafia. His son, Massimo Ciancimino, was arrested for money laundering in 2006. More recently, he has agreed to help the authorities. Lo IOR che cosa costituiva? Aveva uh, l'extraterritorialità che nessuno poteva entrare a all'interno dello Stato, non potevano essere fatti erogatori, non poteva essere controllato nessuno, per cui all'interno di questi uffici dello IOR e presso la banca dello IOR ci sentiva tutti tranquilli. For more than 30 years, Vito Ciancimino managed the kickbacks on public works contracted out to mafia front companies. Millions of euros had to be cleansed of their illegal provenance in order to be reinvested. Massimo Ciancimino says his father also used his IOR accounts to hand out bribes on behalf of now convicted mafia godfathers Bernardo Provenzano and Salvatore Riina. Mio padre di fatto era il raccoglitore di tutte le tangenti e il distributore in maniera equa di tutte le parti. Mio padre poi di volta in volta incontrava i politici all'interno degli IOR e dava le loro spettanze. Una banca che ha visto transitare anche attraverso mio padre soldi che personalmente appartenevano o a Provenzano o a Rina che poi venivano veicolati all'estero. Italian prosecutors are currently investigating Massimo Ciancimino's revelations about the IOR's mafia connections. Massimo Ciancimino says Don Vito's accounts at the bank remained active until shortly before his death in 2002. L'atteggiamento diciamo, del, del mondo clericale nei confronti di chi operava lo IOR non è mai cambiato, devo dire, con mio padre né prima né dopo l'arresto, è stato sempre molto comprensivo, tra virgolette, verso quelli che potevano essere problemi insorti durante il tragitto umano. That understanding seems still to be in evidence. The Vatican has never been a signatory to international conventions on money laundering, so its bank cannot operate in the financial markets directly. For its daily activities, the IOR therefore uses other banks, some of them located down the street from St. Peter's Square. IOR accounts in these banks are used for all ordinary banking transactions, such as the cashing of checks. This is how the relationship works. The IOR screens the real beneficiaries of its operations by depositing its clients' checks in cumulative IOR accounts in other banks. The IOR then withdraws the money in bulk and stores it in the Vatican vaults. During the entire process, only the IOR knows whose money is being handled. IOR account holders will have the sums at their disposal free from traceability. Diego Nemone would thus give money to Father Evaldo Biasini. Biasini would deposit the sums on the Congregation of the Precious Bloods accounts. The money, including Diego Nemones, would then transit through the Congregation's IOR accounts. Finally, Father Biasini would return the laundered money to Diego Nemone, whom, according to prosecutors, then used it to pay bribes. This key witness for Italian prosecutors has admitted being the courier of the cash transfers between Anemone and Father Biasini. Indeed, Biasini's carefree handling of money earned him the nickname Father ATM. As a result of this man's testimony, charges for corruption and fraud in public works have now been filed against Diego Anemone and numerous associates, including former Italian cabinet members and other high-ranking public officials. Father Evaldo Biasini has not been formally charged. Yeah. 
The cash contained in the envelopes handed out to the key witness was withdrawn by Father ATM through checks he would write out from the congregation's IOR accounts. Two of these checks were processed by the IOR through a transit account they hold at the Intesa San Paolo Bank in Rome. Count number 800. From the early 80s and for most of three decades, Federico Bussoletti was a director in the bank where the IOR holds the account. In Bussoletti's time, the bank's name was Banco Ambrosiano and its main shareholder was the IOR. Bussoletti, now retired, managed the Banco Ambrosiano's daily relationship with the Vatican Bank. Un nostro incaricato andava allo Iora a ritirare gli assegni e gli assegni venivano versati in, uh, sul conto. Che tipo di dati avevate su, diciamo, il beneficiario? Il... Ah, nessuno. Noi, il, il, noi ci relazionavamo con lo Iora. Quindi noi, tutto il nostro rapporto era con lo Iora. Quello che loro versavano dentro riguardava loro, non noi. We have obtained this report by the Bank of Italy dated February 2010 about a suspected money laundering operation within IOR account number 800 held at the Intesa San Paolo Bank in Rome. The signatory of the account is IOR President Ettore Gotti Tedeschi. The report was issued because the IOR made a 650,000 euro cash withdrawal and failed to specify the final destination of the money. Non avevano bisogno del contante, che ci faceva? Cosa ci facevano? Cioè, versare gli assegni e poi prelevarli? Non, non capisco perché. C'è tanti 650.000 euro, eh, signori. The 650,000 were just a small part of the cash withdrawn by the IOR. In the year 2009 alone, account number 800 has seen a total of withdrawals of over 139 million euros, all of them in cash. The IOR has justified its behavior in a statement to the Bank of Italy, saying that many deals involve cash withdrawals since they are directed to underdeveloped countries where cash settlements in euros or US dollars of transactions, always done strictly for religious purposes, are largely diffused. Cioè, se picco pallino in Italia viene al Banca Ambrosiano per dare 100 milioni in Svizzera o la mafia o chi volete, deve avere l'autorizzazione, se no non la fa. A lui ora no. Lui ora la fa automaticamente, l'unica autorizzazione è entrare dentro. Una volta che uno è entrato può operare sulle Bahamas, su New York o su Peghino, come gli pare. Account number 800 at the Intesa San Paolo Bank has been used as a transit account by the IOR for over 30 years. Only the bank had a different name. It was called Banco Ambrosiano. This document listing IOR account number 800 at the Banco Ambrosiano is dated 1979. It was given to us by Carlo Calvi, son of Roberto Calvi, who was once president of the Banco Ambrosiano. In June 1982, after the bank had been declared bankrupt, Roberto Calvi's body was found hanging underneath Blackfriars Bridge in London, England. His murder has never been solved. His son Carlo now lives in Montreal, Canada. The Vatican itself uh, could not get indebted uh, with foreign banks because the Vatican does not publish his, uh, his, uh, its, its publishes its books. And the, but Ambrosiano was the quite opposite. It was very easy for the Ambrosiano to get indebted on, with the foreign banks. In the late 1970s, together with the then IOR president, Paul Casimir Marcinkus, Roberto Calvi set up a complex international network of offshore holding companies. But in 1982, the system collapsed under the weight of debts worth $1.2 billion. The Vatican uh, was, uh, was and has continued to be uh, uh, over the years uh, an, offshore, an offshore bank, uh, which profits from uh, the extraterritoriality and uh, the fact that it's uh, until recently has not been subject to, to uh, uh, regulations. 
Um, and uh, the, um, they have lent their name to a number of individuals and institutions, not, not just uh, Ambrosiano, over the years, uh, over uh, probably most of, of their, uh, their existence. Although refusing to settle the debts of the Banco Ambrosiano and its subsidiaries, in 1984 the Vatican agreed to make settlements for a total of $250 million to ward off future claims. Neither Monsignor Marcinkus nor any other member of the clergy were brought to justice for their role in the affair because they were immune from prosecution in Italy. Instead, Marcinkus remained at the helm of the Vatican Bank until 1989. The Ambrosiano bankruptcy and the unsolved murder of Roberto Calvi left an indelible stain on the reputation of the Vatican Bank. The affair still haunts the Catholic Church today. The members of the board of directors of Ambrosiano and uh, they went through a trial, but they, they themselves would not have been able to create the network without the help of the Vatican. So the, the responsibility is both criminal and civil. In terms of uh, moral terms, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to quantify. Yet despite the Ambrosiano bankruptcy and the murder of Roberto Calvi, the Institute for Religious Works remains inaccessible to this day. The Vatican press office has turned down all of our requests for interviews with senior clergy involved in the IOR's administration and management. Lawyers for IOR president Ettore Gotti Tedeschi have also refused to answer our questions. Father Evaldo Biasini, now also known as Father ATM, is keeping a very low profile too. We went to Biasini's congregation looking for him. We also tried to phone Biasini to ask him about the issues raised in this film. Ho oh, capito, va bene, la ringrazio. Prego. Arrivederci. It took a money laundering investigation by Italian prosecutors into the IOR and its president to trigger a reaction from the Vatican. On December 30th, 2010, Pope Benedict XVI issued a decree in the form of a motu proprio legislation emanating directly from the pontiff. For the first time in its 2,000 years of history, the Holy See has decided to address issues of financial transparency, money laundering and financing of terrorism. Thomas Hong Soon Han, South Korea's ambassador to the Vatican, has served as an international auditor for the Holy See's finances. This motto proprio represents the Holy See's intention to work in, collab in close collaboration with the international community uh, to promote trans uh, transparency in the financial and monetary uh, 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 transactions and also uh, to, uh, to eradicate the illegal dealings, illegal uh, activities. Pope Benedict XVI has also founded an authority for financial information a new Vatican watchdog over its internal financial transactions. Uh, there is a great amount of need for all the members of the church to collaborate uh, so that this you know, uh, financial information uh, authority could do its job you know, effectively. I'm very uh, uh, optimistic and positive you know, uh, for the future because the Holy Father is very much interested in implementing uh, the uh, motu proprio, so that's it. Catholics everywhere will be hoping that Pope Benedict's desire for financial transparency at the Vatican is translated into genuine and lasting reform. If it isn't, then the Holy See will find it hard to shake off a reputation as a place where money making takes precedence over saving souls. And that's it for this edition of People in Power. If you'd like to comment on this film or anything else, we'd love to hear from you on aljazeera.net forward slash English. Until next time, goodbye.